Ebenezer Church family. Welcome to our Noonday Bible Study. Pray you're all having a wonderful day. Um, just glad that you're with us today so we can get into studying God's Word and learning more about Him. Um, lots to pray for, as always. Um, people who are um, going through all over the world. So we're gonna, I'm going to ask my husband to open us up in prayer. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day that you've made. Um, Lord, please help us rejoice and be glad in it. So much is going on in the world, uh, Russia, Ukraine, um, United States of America, uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, uh, these uh, elections, Lord, I, we, just, we just give it all to you. Uh, we just pray your will be done. And we ask you, Lord, to continue to save more souls and bring them to the knowledge of the truth of you. Lord, we thank you that you are a healer, that you're helping those that are in the hospital now and those that you brought out. Lord, um, we ask you to order our steps as Christians that we may accomplish that which you called us to uh, do. And Lord, thank you. Thank you for being God and God alone. Uh, please be in this Bible study today. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Again, thank you so much for just hanging out with us uh, for this uh, portion of time. Uh, as we just get into the Word of God. Just a few announcements. Thank you for staying connected to ebcnc.com. Lord has just blessed us so much as a church body. And, and for our friends and visitors, we thank you also for staying connected with us. Uh, we thank you for praying for our 845 in-person and 1045 in-person services. And of course, our 10 o'clock online virtual uh, as we just continue to lift up Jesus. Uh, we've added another Bible study uh, on Thursdays, uh, in-person Bible study at 6 o'clock. That's Thursdays at 6 o'clock in person. We're actually in the book of 1 John. It's been uh, going great, and we just uh, praise the Lord for uh, what he's doing in the midst of us. Uh, our Bible reading plan for today, Bianca. is Numbers chapter 26, Psalms chapter 69, Isaiah chapter 16, and First Peter chapter 4. Amen. Happy reading. Um, our saying from the day from uh, Dr. Barry, um, we don't often realize where we put our hope. We can seek sustenance, energy, or relief in the most transient, innocuous things, from our morning coffee to a vacation. We've been uh, anticipating for months. These things are not bad in themselves, but if they consistently or constantly serve as minor fixes in our daily lives, they can shift our focus. We can end up trading God's help for caffeine and a few days in the sun. Mm. Um, so we've got to make sure that we uh, really keep the Lord first. And we do. We have a lot of just small fixes in our lives. And Christ is like, hey, I'm here. And the Holy Spirit is like, I'm with you. <laughs> and so let's put him first. As we get into our lesson today, uh, we've been talking about demonstrate a fully obedient faith. Demonstrate that fully obedient faith and reject substitutes for faith in the Lord. So we want to reject those things, and we're going to get back into uh, 2 Corinthians uh, as where we're at. And I want you just to uh, think about just how you can be used. Paul the Apostle in this section of Scripture is really challenged. Um, his challenge is to stay, keep Christ first, mm -hmm. and also not to depend on his intellectual capacities, his Pharisee of a Pharisee, um, but just allowing the Holy Spirit to work in him in a wonderful way. So, Bianca, mm -hmm. if you can start us out, just a little review in 1 Corinthians 2 2. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. We talked about this extensively on last time that it was all about Christ, all about focusing on him. And um, Paul the Apostle showed us that. So let's transition into today's scripture, 1 Corinthians 2 and 3. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. Wow. Bianca, what's that speak to you? Um, that Paul, I'm assuming this is Paul when he was, um, you know, going around spreading the gospel, that um, he didn't act like he was better than everybody else. He didn't act like, you know, well, I have the, you know, I have God's word and you just need to listen to me. But um, he did it in a spirit of meekness, in a spirit of fear, um, understanding that these people could have, you know, beat him up and put him in jail, which they did on several occasions. But um, 
just not with a superiority complex, but just telling people about the gospel because he knew that it was important, because he knew that it was something that God had called him to do. And so he was doing it out of obedience to God and because he wanted more people to be saved. Amen. Um, commentary talks about what Bianca brought out. It says, Paul further emphasizes that his personal demeanor was neither impressive nor attractive. And, you know, Paul the Apostle, many theologians believe that he had some kind of eye trouble. Uh, we already know that there was a messenger of Satan um, that was allowed to attack him. And uh, he struggled with a lot of things. Um, he would get on ships and the ships would go down. Um, he would be a stone. He was left for dead one time because they stoned him. And that had to have some kind of effect on him. Uh, his demeanor, his personality, his skin, uh, just the structure of his body going through all these things. But uh, God continued to strengthen him in the midst of his weakness. And that's an encouragement. Whatever impediment you may have in your life, know that God is bigger than that. And he's saying, trust him. When you're weak, then are you strong? Mm -hmm. uh, it goes on, that commentary brings out, he was with the Corinthians in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. Um, this much trembling, really reverence to God. Um, also, it, it, you know, some can think of this as a Parkinson's, you know, um, uh, just in a physical stature, not saying that he did, but it does bring out a lot of thought, okay? God used this man that was struggling, uh, making it through life. And uh, there's, I, I just don't believe there's any excuse, uh, no matter what you're going through, what um, your handicap may be. Turn it over to the Lord, and um, someone say He'll work it out. <laughs> uh, you, you just you just gotta trust Him because He's left us here for a purpose, and even the best of people, um, they they all have they have something. I it comes back to my mind that uh, young lady who jumped out of the window. Um, I think it was in New York or somewhere. Um, the uh, she was from North Carolina. She was a beauty contestant, uh, and, um, and, and she committed suicide. And to look at her, I mean, she was a picture of health. Um, she had everything going for her. She had this expensive apartment, but mentally and emotionally, there were something that, that was deeper um, that was taking hold of her, that, that, that found a weak part. So even when you look at someone, you're like, well, if, if I was like them, you know, if I had what they had, or if, if I was skinny like them, or if I was big like them, uh, whatever it may be, Please don't be jealous. Don't don't get caught up in that because you never know uh, what somebody else is going through. What's that old saying? Walk a mile in my shoes. Mm -hmm. you, you just don't know. You just don't know. So we have to be content in whatever state we find ourselves in. And Paul the apostle said uh, he was there in weak and uh, weakness and fear and trembling. Um, but most importantly, he was thinking about Christ. Christ is imminent preeminent in everything. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about the treasure, B. The treasure of the gospel was contained in an earthen vessel that the excellence of the power might be of God and not of Paul. What does that mean to you, B? Um, I mean, God could have come down and just shouted the news of the gospel. You know, he could have sent angels like he did when Jesus was born, he just sent angels to everybody and, you know, told us all, you know, your sins are forgiven. Jesus has died. But he used people, he used earthen vessels to get the gospel out and to tell other people about it. And, um, you know, just it makes me think when you see something that's really shiny and clean, um, if you put something dirty next to it, it really illuminates how shiny and clean that other thing is. And I think that's kind of what this is about because God uses us as earthen vessels. When the perfect news of the gospel comes forth, it really shines bright. The Lord wants us to depend on Him in everything that we do. Um, and, and that's where our power, our strength comes from, Him and Him alone. Uh, to, he Himself was an example, that's Paul the Apostle, of how God uses weak things to confound the mighty. I, I love that picture of that little kid reaching up there and that lion um, <laughs> reaching back and there's a glass in between. But I uh, just thank the <laughs> Lord for that. Just how He can use the weak things to just... Um, amaze us and think in your life think about I, I think about our kids being born and I was right there in the room and I was like oh my goodness it's just just amazing that a child could even go through that trauma and still survive uh, you know that a mother can go through that trauma and still survive but God does amazing things I remember 
uh, we were told that our kids, you know, they kind of bounce if you drop them. And um, one kind of slipped out, and um, I won't tell you which one, but they didn't bounce too much. But they recovered. <laughs> you know, they were strong in that whole process. And I think about when their heads were forming and, you know, the, the cartilage was still there and it got, you could feel a little spot there. Like, Lord, it, it is a miracle that we could get, we are where we are considering all the things that we've gone through. Uh, I just thank God. Thank God for his grace and mercy in our lives. Let's look at this 1 Corinthians 2 and 4. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Yes, yes. And Paul the Apostle's like, okay, I could have been, you know, in my rhetoric, you know, how I bring forth things. And this is tough. Uh, and and we, we all have to trust him. So many times we can go, okay, if I say this, I say this, I can save somebody. Or if I go down the Romans road, I can do that. No, it's all about Christ. Thank God for those tools and those assistance. But we always have to put uh, Jesus first. Uh, neither Paul's speech nor his preaching were in persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. I do want to talk a little bit about this that it was the power of God. So many times we can be talented. Um, you know, Michael Jackson, I use him as an example, very talented, gifted person. Um, but there are some questions if he was saved, if he knew who Jesus Christ was. And so we could use it. I think that Michael Jackson would have been very effective if he uh, <laughs> came into, you know, a Baptist church and, you know, sang some songs and even gave an altar call. And he didn't even have to be a believer. I bled a whole bunch of people would have read oh, to the front. Yeah. I mean, it would have been just great. And he would have left and went like, look at that. Look what I did. <laughs> but it has to be in the power of God because that's where the true change takes place. Yeah. Uh, some suggest that his speech refers to the material uh, he presented and his preaching to the manner of his presentations. Others define his speech as his witness to individuals and his preaching as his messages of groups. So however that is an interpreter, uh, Paul the Apostle says, I want to lift up Jesus first. What, what can we learn from this uh, even in our, our day and time, Bianca? Um, I'm, what you keep saying that it's really just the anointing and the power of God. Um, like you said, we have all these little things that, you know, say this, do the Romans road, you know, we come up with, you know, how do, how do you enter into a conversation um, so you can share the gospel with somebody, you know, use this or say that. And, you know, they have, I know I've heard of preachers who have teams of people who help them write their sermons so that they can say the right thing to this group and that group and everything. And all that's okay, I suppose. But in the end, it is Jesus who saves. It's not us. You know, we share the gospel in whatever way God leads us. But it is all about the Holy Spirit moving through the anointing and Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Well, you can say just about anything, but if it is that time and God has so ordained for that person to be saved, is going to be the right word. Amen. Amen. Jesus first. Uh, according to the standards of this world, the apostle might never have won and oratorical contest. In spite of this, the Spirit of God used the message to produce conviction of sin and conversion of God. And I found that, you know what? God is God and God alone. He can use anybody. I think about Balaam and um, the donkey in the Old Testament that he used a donkey to speak into Balaam's life. And I always think, if he can use a donkey, he can use anybody. And we can never get uh, too high up. I remember Herod, I think it was Herod, that um, um, the people were clapping, were plotting mm -hmm. for him in New Testament. And he was like, basically, like, I did this. This is my kingdom. And judgment came on him. And right at that point, uh, he was struck dead and worms uh, overtook him. And so we can never, never forget if it had not been for the Lord on our sides. Any amens out there? Mm -hmm. uh, let's look at 1 Corinthians 2 and 5. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Our faith, and we're going to break this down uh, as we just think about it, but our faith has to be in God. Uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. But so often we put faith in things. Mm -hmm. um, thank God for doctors. Thank God for medications. Thank God for foods. 
thank God for homes, thank God for family, but our faith can't be centered on those things. And sometimes we can center on those things instead of God. So we have to keep God first and realize that those are blessings that he's put within our lives, but um, it's easy that the enemy can come in and make those things idols. Mm -hmm. And God's like, there's gonna be no other God before me. And I think all of us have been challenged with that in one respect or the other. Uh, look at this as we talk a little bit more about Paul. Paul knew that there was the utmost danger that his hearers might be interested in himself or in his own personality rather than in the living Lord. Let's talk about that, B. What, what are your thoughts? Um, it's easy to happen. It is. It happens. I think it happens way too often in um, today's uh, church that we, you know, we follow a man or, you know, we follow this group rather than following Christ. And, you know, so many people are like, well, I'm not going there anymore because I'm going to follow, follow this pastor wherever he goes. And, I mean, you know, it's great if he's teaching and preaching the word of God, but we have to be careful that we don't start following the man and not follow Jesus, not follow the Holy Spirit, because God is not going to share his glory with anyone. Amen. Good point. Um, conscious of his own ability, Paul goes on, uh, 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 on, a, on of his own inability, I want to get that <laughs> right, uh, to bless or to save, he determined that he would lead men to trust in God alone rather than in the wisdom of men. So that should be our goal as Christians. We want people to trust in God and God alone, not in us. Um, Paul the Apostle kind of summed it up like this. He says, follow me as I follow Christ. And so that is our whole purpose, okay, is we're leading people, but we want to get them to um, the cross. We want to get them to Jesus, that they can depend and trust on him. And so many have depended on people. And thank God for good people, but we can't save you. Good people can't save us. Only Christ can save us. So mm -hmm. we've got to get them to Jesus and encourage them in that. All who proclaim the gospel message or teach the word of God should make their constant or this their constant aim. So Christ first, lift it up. And I want you to think about how are you leading people to Christ? How are you encouraging people to grow in Christ? Mm -hmm. That's That should be our aim. That's our goal as we're, as we're being led of the Holy Spirit. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2.6 speaks a little bit more about this. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. Wow, wow. I want to break this one down because now we're, we're really digging deep into the spiritual realm. And so many people want to get deep. Just read the Bible. I mean, it is a lot of deep stuff there. Here it says, first of all, the wisdom shown in the gospel is divine in its origin. And it truly is. You know, there's a lot of knowledge. Been to school years and years and years, you know, great teachers, some not so great, mm -hmm. but there's a lot, a lot of schemes. I was talking to my kids the other day about uh, economics, you know, and uh, just the things that I learned in economics and uh, economic cost and all of these things and just uh, a lot of theories, you know, so many theories. I'm like, oh, that's so smart. And I remember math class and I had to take a calculus class and I was like, oh my goodness, this is, this, all of this in intellectual uh, stuff, you know, and you think about Einstein, Einstein, <laughs> and you know how smart he was, but yet he was socially awkward. And, and, and but the, the scriptures, when you get into it, you just know it's deeper. It's, it's just, it goes to another level. There's, there's some logic in there, but the logic without the spirit of God is nothing. And this is why this is an inspired word. When you read Song of Songs, you read uh, Ecclesiastes, you uh, read Proverbs. I had my kids and my family, we read years and years upon years through the book of Proverbs, mm -hmm. uh, a proverb per day, and just really meditated on it. So we would go through Proverbs, um, the, the entire book, every month, because we wanted to know the wisdom of God. And it has blessed us. It has helped us so much to discern and hear the voice of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about We Speak Wisdom. We speak wisdom among those who are mature or full grown, yet it is not the wisdom of this age, nor would it be wisdom in the eyes of the rulers of this age. Saints, as we're growing in the Lord, our ways 
are a lot different or will become a lot different than this world. Uh, we're going to stick out more as darkness is uh, approaching. And um, um, First John talks about the spirit of the Antichrist. Uh, it is already here. We, we've got to be aware as we walk closer in God, and he directs us that sometimes it's going to seem like we're swimming upstream and it's going to be tough. But that's where Paul the Apostle talks about when he's weak, then he's strong, that he mm -hmm. determined not to depend on himself. Um, the wisdom of the world, their wisdom is a perishable thing, which like themselves is born for one brief day. It does. It, it passes away. Um, you, I, I've dealt with people very knowledgeable, um, but that knowledge only went but so far, mm -hmm. you know. And but the wisdom of God, and that'll take us to eternity. Mm -hmm. Let's look at First Corinthians two seven. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Wow. Um, as we just pull back the layers and as the Holy Spirit is teaching um, Paul the Apostle as he's writing this and it's revealing, he's showing us where his total dependence was on. And that as we dig more and more into the scriptures, we start to realize, wow, God, you have done an amazing thing in our lives that we can even understand God's word. Uh, a mystery it talks about is a, a New Testament truth not previously revealed but now made known to believers by the apostles and prophets of the early church. So, so we are getting this fresh revelation, even though, you know, this was 32 or, or 30, Jesus dies in 33 AD approximately. Mm -hmm. And this is probably written around 56 or so, 50s. Uh, it's still fresh revelation even to us in 2022. <laughs> <laughs> All of these things because God has revealed this to get understanding and uh, interpretations from the Old Testament. It goes on, it says, the mystery is hidden, is the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. So Bianca, what does this do for you to, to know all this wonders that God has done? Um, it makes me feel special that God thought about me. He didn't just, you know, so often we read in the Old Testament, we read about the Israelites and the Hebrew children and how God delivered them and did all these wonderful things for them. And, um, you know, we always kind of treat the Jews as special. And they are. They're God's chosen people. But God, it is almost like God reserved a special piece mm -hmm. for us, for those of us who came after the resurrection of Jesus Christ and for the Gentiles that we have a new covenant based on better promises. He didn't forget about the Old Testament and the Jewish people, but he saved a special place for us. We are so blessed. All of us who are in Christ are so blessed. Uh, dealing with this mystery, another layer. The mystery of the gospel includes such wonderful truths as the fact that now Jews and Gentiles are made one in Christ. Yes, we have been grafted in as Gentiles into the body of the family uh, of the Lord. And that is so wonderful. Only, only God. That's the mystery, how he can do that, how he can make us one of his chosen ones. I remember that. Uh, the woman, uh, Samaritan woman, I believe it was, uh, who uh, came or to Jesus' feet, and she wanted her, her a healing from her daughter. Oh, and um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the Phoenician, the Phoenician woman, mm -hmm. and um, Jesus said, "No, this is only for the house of Israel." And she said, "Even the dogs get the crumbs from the table." Mm -hmm. And Jesus, like, my goodness, <laughs> uh, that's that's the kind of faith I'm talking about. And so this whole process here of how God has allowed us to. Uh, come into his family. It's beautiful mm -hmm. um, that the Lord Jesus will come and take his waiting people home to be with himself. That's good news mm -hmm. that he's going to come back on a cloud where every eye can see him and we're going to be mm -hmm. called up uh, to meet him. Um, those who remain, there are going to be some that will remain, uh, but those who have passed before that, we're going to be with Christ. To be absent from the body means to be That's present true. with the Lord. Uh, look at this next part. And that not all believers will die, but all will be changed. Amen. Um, we will be changed. That is such good news to know that um, 
it does not appear what we shall be, but we know when we see him, we shall be like him. That's that first John on chapter three, that we're going to be changed to be more like him. Let's get more, one more verse because I this is just beautiful to think about this. First Corinthians two and eight, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. It, it's so deep that even the enemy didn't understand what, what God was up to. And he was doing all he could do to prevent it. And he was just like falling into God's plan because God knows everything. Uh, the rulers of this age may refer to demonic spirit beings uh, in the heavenlies or to their human agents on earth. And so this whole process, God had given total victory over the enemy. No matter what he tries, even now, God is still faithful. Uh, they didn't understand. They didn't understand the hidden wisdom of God, Christ on a cross, or realize that their, mur that their murder of the Holy Son of God would result in their own destruction. Wow. Uh, from the foundations of the earth, God had this plan, Genesis, even with Adam and Eve. It, it just, it didn't, it wasn't like it just slipped in. God knew it. He was in control, but there was a bigger plan that was working for our benefit. And that's that's yeah. good news for us. Um, had they known the ways of God, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. <sighs> thank God for Jesus. Amen. Thank God for the plan. And thank God that we have been delivered and that he desires more people to be brought to the knowledge of the truth of him. And I just, I want to encourage you. I think so often we take for granted what we have. Let's not do that. Let's seek him more with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength and tell others that Jesus lives and he's coming back. Bianca, yeah. any final thoughts? Um, just going back to that um, specialness, you know, which is something I just really thought about during this Bible study and even how God's plan, you know, through all of this, you, you know, like we said, if the rulers had known how God, how Jesus was going to be glorified through this death, they wouldn't have done it. But God orchestrated this whole thing so that we could be saved. And yeah. um, that's just a beautiful thing that he just literally moved heaven and earth so that we could be his children. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you. As just thinking about uh, what Bianca just said and that we can talk to you. That is just amazing and that you hear our prayers and that you've called us uh, yours, uh, that we are your children. Now, Lord, I just uh, thank you as we go through the remainder of this day, the remainder of this week, that our lives will glorify you. And thank you that when we're weak, then are we strong, that we can depend on you. We just give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for being with us, and until we meet again, shalom.